If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, welcome to another edition of VC Theory. This is an overdub of a parse tree video I did a while ago. So today we're going to be talking about uh, parse trees for context tree grammars and leftmost derivations. So here you can see me rattling on about some random nonsense, blah, 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 parse trees, yay. So I think I'm going to talk about, so I don't have my script in front of me because I, ne I never have a script, but so I, I'm talking about parse trees for a long time. We're talking about a context tree grammar and maybe we'll talk about like the structure of all of the derivations in them. Yeah, so parse trees are a visualization of what a derivation uh, looks like. When we derive a string by applying rules over and over and over, it's just a visual representation of what that process actually is. All right, so <laughs> I look quite confused in the things that I'm saying, but, uh, yeah, so let's see. What am I going to say next? What is Ryan going to say next? All right, so here I am guess I'm doing an example. S going to SS or left S right or epsilon. So that's the set of balanced parentheses or the grammar for it at least. And here I'm trying to derive the string left, right, left, right. So that's a set of balanced parentheses and it's easily uh, derivable in this grammar in the way you have to do the SS rule here. So S, so I have to apply it goes to SS here. And then here I have a choice of whether I can apply the left S right to the first one or to the second one. So here I do the first one. Uh, sorry, oh my God, second one. And then I do the second one. And then I'll make the one of the two S's go away. I think I do the second one, yeah. So I make the second one S go to empty and the other one, and the first one go to empty. Yeah, so that's one way to derive the string. And I think all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show uh, another way to actually make the string, the same string in the same grammar. And what I'll probably do is I will, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, yeah, so notice that uh, I could have chosen the left or the right S up there. I didn't, uh, there was, uh, I pr pretty much had a full choice there, but using something called a leftmost derivation, I always will choose the leftmost variable in the derivation so far. I will never choose a different variable. So here I replace the first S now, and uh, then I'll replace that first S yet again with empty. And then now, since there's only one variable, then I'm going to work with it because it's the leftmost one. And then uh, make left S right and then have it go to empty again. All right. So uh, I think what I'm saying here is that uh, in, in any derivation, I can always use, I can always find a leftmost one because there's always a leftmost variable. And so I can always work with it because it's a context-free grammar. It doesn't matter what the context in which the variable is. So I can, I can work with it completely freely of all the other variables. So I might as well just choose the leftmost one. Okay, so then now I'm here, it looks like I'm talking about what a parse tree is. So it's a visual representation of what this looks like. So a tree in computer science is you have a bunch of nodes and all of the nodes underneath a node are the children of that node, and a parse tree has uh, elements of variables or terminals as the nodes, and the ones that have children are the variables themselves. So here the S at, up top is the first S, the two underneath it are the, the two S's, so S produces SS is that first S up top makes the two S's down beneath it, and then now we will look at the left S, the one I'm circling now, 
and then the right S there. The left S is going to make the left S right. So that one's going to have three children, which are the left. Uh, I, oh, it I, looks like I do a different colors here. Make it pretty. So then I have left, and then the middle one's going to be S, and then the right one is going to be right. And then the, uh, and then it's going to look the same on the other side because it's symmetric. But the middle S is going to produce empty because we, uh, we chose that rule for that uh, variable s. So here it looks like I'm going to copy and paste it over onto the other side because it's completely symmetric. And it looks like I'm going to have trouble <laughs> trouble fitting it all on without colliding. Uh, it's one of the issues of having a really small screen to depict a lot of info. So uh, that's what a parse tree is. Or, or an example for this particular grammar. All right, so what am I rattling on about now? And so the way to figure out what the, the, the parse tree actually corresponds to is you read the terminals, which are at the very bottom of the tree, all of the leaves from left to right. So if you read them from uh, left to right, you will have uh, left, empty, right, left, empty, right. And, and there are certain tr tree traversal algorithms to find out what those are. But here I'm saying, if we just read the leaves from left to right, then that's the string that the original derivation produces, which is exactly what we want. So uh, one thing that you can prove is that uh, leftmost derivations correspond exactly to parse trees. Yes, please subscribe, subscribe, please. Click the bell too, please click the bell. Uh, so you get uh, all notifications of easy theory stuff. Uh, let's see, what, what else am I going to say here? So I'm circling a variable. Why am I circling a variable? So it produces those children. Yeah, we already know that. Silly. Okay, whole parse tree. There's the whole parse tree. And the derivation. So here I'm probably just saying that they correspond one to one. That every derivation, leftmost derivation, has ex has a parse tree exactly one, and every parse tree has exactly one der leftmost derivation, and and that's pretty easy to see. All right, what else am I saying here? This is why I uh, make sure that the recording works and that the audio is not completely silent when I record things. <sighs> I'm so silly sometimes. All right, what else am I saying here? Still got like a minute and a half. Well, what else do we have to say? That's what a parse tree is. We've already went over a parse tree. Trying... Too bad I'm not better at reading lips so that I can, I can read out what I'm saying and try to lip sync what I'm really saying with overdubbed audio, but I'm not that good. If any one of you are really good at reading lips, uh, that would be really cool to reenact what I'm actually saying, but I'm not good at that. That'd be a fun machine learning project for YouTube, to take silent video and try to uh, 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 produce a transcript for the, the video uh, automatically without any human intervention. That'd be a cool project. All right, then. so this audio is <laughs> went completely off the rails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please subscribe. Cl uh, click all of the links down in the video description down below. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, I'll see you next time.